us today. Fall is here and we are in the pumpkin chunkin' leaf fallin' thankfulness making kind of mood. Thankfulness making? Yep, and I'll tell you more about that later. But first, let's stand up and sing one of my favorite crazy songs that help us open our eyes to all the things God had for us. Woo, everyone stand up! can see the wonderful things you have for me open my eyes so I can be all that you have planned for me head up head down arms to the sky arms to the ground attention it's time to play shuffle everyone stand up watch the candy corn as it shuffles under the pumpkins when the pumpkins stop moving try and guess where the candy corn is if you guess correctly you keep standing and playing if you guess incorrectly you sit down everyone ready here we go round one Three pumpkins, one candy corn. Cover it up and shuffle. Stop. Take a guess. Did you get it? Well done. Round two. Shuffle. Stop. Which one is it under? Three, two, one. You got it. Round three. This time, five pumpkins and two candy corn. This one is gonna be tough. Here we go. Shuffle. Stop! 
you only have to locate one candy corn. So take a guess. And reveal. You got it. Last round. Round four. This last round is eight pumpkins and three candy corn. Find just one candy corn. Here we go. Shuffle. Stop. Where are they? Three, two, one. Reveal. Did you get it? Well done. Give yourselves a hand. Thanks for playing Shuffle. Okay, that was not as easy as I thought it was gonna be. But I'm thankful I got at least one of those, right? You mean you lost every round except one and you're still thankful? Well, yeah. I mean, even when I stink at a lot of things, and I mean a lot, it helps me to find at least one thing to be thankful for. It keeps me from having a bad attitude. Mm, being thankful keeps you from having a bad attitude? Yeah. I mean, it sure does. I bet you can watch today's story and find a few things to be thankful for. Check it out. Hey, Tyler. I can juggle two apples. Well, I can juggle three. Well, I can juggle four. Well, I can juggle five. Prove it. <laughs> wow, that was pretty impressive. Did you know there's something I've learned about apples recently? Oh yeah, what's that? Well, you know how in the picture of Adam and Eve from the Bible, Eve is usually holding an apple? Yeah, I've definitely seen that before. Well, it turns out the fruit that Adam and Eve ate wasn't necessarily an apple at all. It could have been anything, but experts believe it was a pomegranate. What? <laughs> That's cool. The Bible is jam-packed with so many amazing stories just like that one. You may have heard the story of creation before, and you may think it's just a story about two people, Adam and Eve. No way. While Adam and Eve were part of God's story, that story isn't all about them. What? Tell me more. When the world was created, God the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit were all together, and each one of them had a specific part in its creation. Teamwork makes the dream work. And to kick it all off, God spoke and created the world. And on the first day, he created light. Whoa! And then he created day and night by separating the light and the darkness. And on the second day, God created the sky. And on day three, God created dry land and plants. He gave the dry ground a name, land, and he gave the water a name, calling it sea. Guys, you get a name, you get a name. Everybody gets a name. And on the fourth day, God created the sun, the moon, and the stars. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. God made you what you are. I like it. Thanks, it's the remix. And God kept creating things like fish and birds on day five. And on day six, he made the animals that live on land and people. Lions, tigers, humans, oh my. God named those first people he made, Adam and Eve, and they were all BFFs. Everything was perfect. That was until a sneaky snake told Adam and Eve some lies and convinced them to disobey God. Skrrr, what? When Adam and Eve disobeyed, it really hurt their friendship with God, but God knew this was gonna happen. Right, because God knows everything. And he already had a plan to fix their friendship with him. Ooh, this story's getting good. And that's exactly what the Bible is. It's a true story that God wrote about how much he loves the people he made. And we can break it down like this. Not quite like that, oh. but like this. You see, there are two big parts to God's story, the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament tells the true stories of how God created everything and chose a special group of people to show his love to the world. Mm. It's full of songs and poems, wow. war stories, what? tales of giants, talking donkeys, <laughs> kings and queens. And in every book and every chapter, there are messages about the future when God would send the perfect person to fix people's friendship with him once and for all. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
and the New Testament part of the Bible is when the person comes on the scene as a real life human. Sweet baby Jesus. Yep. The New Testament is full of eyewitness accounts that tell the story of how God sent Jesus, his very own son, to fix our friendship with him. And it also has stories of people who risked their lives to tell everyone this good news. God had a plan for people to know his love and experience friendship with him. And that's what the story of the Bible is all about. God spoke to create the world and he kept on speaking. He spoke to people who wrote down his words and turned them into books. Got it, God. I'll write it down. Got it. All 66 books in the Old Testament and New Testament that God inspired people to write were all put together in what we now call the Bible. From beginning to end, the Bible is God's word to us, and every word of it is true, and all the stories inside of it actually happened thousands of years ago. Most of all, these things that happened in history are His story, God's story about everything He did to show us His love. Man, the Bible really is the best book ever. You got that right. Well, you were right. God gave us so many things to be thankful for, like animals, ocean, our family, the Bible. I could go on and on. There's so many things. I agree. And that's what we need to know today. God gave us everything. Say that with me. God gave us everything. So how can we remember to be thankful for all of these things? Well, you can think of a donut. What? I mean, I like donuts and all, but how is that supposed to help? Let me show you. So, tell me what you see. Mm, I see glaze and some cereal pieces that are falling off and some scrumptiousness. Mm, like a donut. And what's it missing? Nothing's missing. What about that hole? What about the hole? Well, then you get it. Ah, uh, no, I don't get it. You looked at this donut and saw everything there was and not what there wasn't. You see, when you're being thankful, you're paying attention to all the things you do have and not what you don't. Oh, that makes sense. So when I'm having trouble being thankful, I can think of all of the things I do have and not what I don't. That's right. In 1 Thessalonians 5.18, it says to be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for us. Which means God wants us to always find something to be thankful for, because He knows that it will help our hearts, especially when things are hard or we're in a bad mood. Mood. So, every day make it your goal to look at the donut and not the hole! Exactly! Okay, one more question. Sure. Do I get to eat the donut now? <laughs> you sure do. Yes. And while she eats that donut, let's sing a song of thanks. Everyone stand up! your love and what you've done for me i know you saved my life and i'm thankful now each day i'll follow you with my heart and all i do you're everything to me and i'm thankful your love and what you've done for me i know you saved my life and i'm thankful now each day i follow you with my heart and all i do you're everything to me and i'm thankful
a great reminder of all the amazing things God has given us and that we have so much to be thankful for. Like animals, oceans, my family, the Bible, Jesus. Man, I could go on and on. <laughs> yes, we could. We can give thanks because God, God gave, gave us everything. Our memory verse from this week will help us remember too. Say this after me. Thank God. Thank God. For this gift. For this gift. Too wonderful for words. Too wonderful for words. 2 Corinthians 15, 9. 2 Corinthians 15, 9. Now, before we go, let's all close our eyes and quiet our hearts and pray. God, thank you for creating the heavens and the earth and everything in it. Thank you for giving us families and the Bible to help us understand how much you love us. Thank you for your son, Jesus. Help us to remember to be thankful and to show it to our families too. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. See you next time. Bye. Bye.